Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Welcome back everyone. We're here in our recipe book that we've been building as we learn all the ins and outs of Google Sheets. You have learned how to get started from scratch, how to use all the formatting tools, how to insert all the things, and then how to organize it. So it's ready for you to work with it and analyze it. In these next few modules, we're going to focus on how to work with your data, breaking it down, sorting, filtering, the beginnings of analyzing your data, and so on. In this video, we're going to focus on sorting and filtering. So let's get started. Let's talk about sorting. Like many things in Google Sheets, you can go through the menu at the top or you can right click and go that direction. First, let's look at the data menu. So click on that at the top. And if you're new to sorting, this is a great place to start because of how straightforward it is. So here we have a few options. If you currently have one cell selected, you will only see sort sheet highlighted. And if you have a column or a specific range selected, you will see sort range. First, let's focus on sort sheet. Notice my options are to sort the sheet based on which column I am currently in. My only options are to sort A to Z or Z to A. As I do that, you can see the changes that are made everything that is on a single row stays together. That's the benefit of sorting by the sheet. And it's probably what you need most of the time, honestly. Our alternative to this option is to click on a column and right click, or that little down arrow does the same thing. And you have those exact same options. Now let's compare that with sort range. So you need to highlight a whole column or a section of a column and come back here. My options again are to sort A to Z or Z to A. However, it only sorts what is highlighted and the remaining columns and rows and data do not change. So in this case, it's making a mess. This form of sorting isn't as common, but it may be beneficial at times for your spreadsheet needs. Make sure to undo if you don't like those changes. And remember, there's a difference between sort sheet and sort range. And before we move on, let's take one more look. There was an option to open up advanced settings, which is still only A to Z and Z to A, but now you can sort more than one column by making your selections and clicking OK. Again, undo if you don't like any of the changes you just made to your recipe book. Let's try the right click option with this one by selecting the column again, and notice there is no option to sort range. So in order to get the option to sort a specific range, you have to highlight a range, either one column or more, right click and go to more cell actions and you'll see sort range. This time you see the same advanced window that we saw from the data menu. So again, sorting the range means it only sorts what you have selected and everything else stays in place. So in the case of a recipe book, that would make a mess of things. So always pay attention to what your needs are when working with your data and if you need to sort the whole sheet or sort a specific range. Let's talk about filtering. First, we have to turn it on. So when we go to data at the very top, we can click filter or we can just go straight to the toolbar and click on the filter icon that kind of looks like a funnel. We now have a green box around our data set and notice we have these little filter icons at the top of every single heading on the first row. So first of all, it's called filtering, but watch this. Click on any filter on any column and look at that. You can sort. This sort is for sorting the whole sheet. So you've already learned how to sort the other way, but do you really need to use it? Mm, not really. Only if you want to sort by range. Otherwise, for all any sorting and filtering needs, use this. So let's have some fun. First, I'm going to sort my recipe titles so that they are in alphabetical order. Next, I'm going to go to my time column and look at my options. Remember how we applied conditional formatting? That means I can sort or filter by color. For my recipe book, anything that is white is 45 minutes or less, so I could filter by white so that only recipes under 45 minutes are showing. 
Here's a really cool trick though. If I don't have any conditional formatting applied, I could actually just use the filter by condition right here. And do these look familiar to you? They look almost identical to the rules that we had with conditional formatting. So in this case, I could select less than and filter so that I only see recipes that are under, let's go with 45 minutes. Notice down below, I could also filter by values, but let's look at that in the next column. Let's go into the filter for courses. Again, we can sort, we can filter by color, but this time I want to look at filter by value. First of all, notice we have a select all and clear button. You're going to want to use those. I'm going to click clear and then let's say I'm looking for dinner tonight. So I'll select things that would apply to dinner, like entrees and sides and things like that. You can click OK to apply the filter. And now you can see my recipe book is smaller as it only shows recipes under 45 minutes and it would be something I could do for dinner tonight. Let's go even further and look at the protein column. I'm going to filter by only chicken because that's what's in my fridge, but I'll also select NA because that would apply to my vegetarian dishes. Finally, I'm going to go over to the kid friendly column and you can see my two values are yes and no. Remember that's because we chose those as our values in data validation because the default would have been true and false. That's why it's always important to know what the value of your checkboxes are set to. So I'm going to select only yes to show and click OK. And there we go. These are my only options for tonight. They're the only items in my recipe book that are under 45 minutes with chicken and are kid friendly. So how awesome is that? And hey, if you want to save this because maybe it's a go to for you, you can. So let's look back up at the toolbar at the filter icon. Using the drop down arrow, you can actually select save as filter view. Filter views are noted with this black border that you can see. At the top left in the black bar where it says name, you can name it such as quick chicken meals for kids. On the right, you can go into additional settings and you have an X to get back out of here and go back to the whole recipe book. And when you're here, you can filter even further if you want to. So let's get back out of here. Now let's do that again. And you can now see that we have that listed as one of our saved filters. Another night on another week and we can come in here to our recipe book. We can go straight to our saved filters and in just a few quick clicks, look at that. It's pretty awesome. I automatically have open this filter. And next time you can actually just go straight to this and click create a new filter when you know you're getting ready to create a new one. So think of filter views as something you would like to view more than once. Use the filters out here on the real data on your real recipe book as something temporary. For example, my recipe book is not complete. So I'm going to come over here and open my ingredients and directions, and I'm going to filter by the ingredients column that is only showing blanks and click OK. And there we go. Now I can just temporarily filter so I know which recipes need to be worked on to complete my recipe book. Use your filter view to look at your filters that you have set up that you want to look at more often. Okay, everyone, that's sorting and filtering. So how do you feel about that? This is when the true magic and power of Google Sheets starts to come out. As you saw, my recipe book was still under construction and yours may be as well. So in our next modules, we will need a recipe book that is a bit more complete. So make sure you've really filled up yours with a variety of recipes so that you can fully utilize it in the coming modules. When you've got your recipe book all fixed up and ready, Meet me over in the next module where we will tackle basic formulas and functions. This video is part of our complete course on Google Sheets. To watch the complete course, click over there. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. And to watch additional videos, click over there.